Hi everyone, I will come to the presentation of this lecture on uh, translated conic sections. So we've been looking at conic sections and the conic sections we've been looking at are the conic sections which are centered at the origin. This time around we'll be looking at conic sections which are not centered at the origin. And if it hasn't been centered at the origin, such a conic section is translated. So uh, let's look at an example of a parabola for example. As you can see, take note of how it's changing and the equation themselves are changing. So, so long as it's not having its turning point there at 0, 0, anywhere where it's going there, this one is showing translations. It could translate either above the y-axis or below the y-axis, or it can go to the right of the x-axis, uh, uh, above the x-axis, below the x-axis, to the right of the y uh, to, of the x of the y-axis, and to the left of the y-axis, even in those points. So for so long as it's not, it's not having its turning point at 0, 0. Such a conic section is said to be translated. Okay, so let's look at standard equations of translated conics. We've got what we call a circle. A circle will just change its uh, center now. Instead of 0, 0, it will have that h, k. So this will be the standard equation of a circle under translations. We go to the parabola, it's the same thing. You're going to have a parabola which is not turning at the point 0, 0, to turn at a new center, which is h, k. So it will have these forms. This one means it's either facing up or down, depending on what you have there. If you have a positive there, it's facing up. If it's a negative there, it will face down, but not at 0, 0. It will depend with the values of c and h and k there. For this form, it's either turning to the right or left, but it will not turn from there to turn at the new center, depending on those values. If it's the it's an ellipse, it's the same thing. You have an ellipse which is like that. It's not centered at the origin. To be centered at the new center, so those will be the value determining what your new center will be. And if it's the hyperbola, it's the same thing. I'm going to have an hyperbola which is not at the center, but it will be at a certain point there. Okay. So with these forms, let's look at some examples. Discuss the following conics. So you've got this first one. Just from the nature of the equation, you can tell this is a parabola. Then you've got this one. From the nature of that, you tell this is an ellipse. And this one is a hyperbola. But the funny thing is, these things are not centered at the origin. They have got new centers. So if we start with the first one, uh, we need to standardize it. Putting it in the standard form of a uh, parabola to be this. From there, it is taking this form. From the previous slide, I was explaining this. It will take this form. And then from here... Just equate 4 and 4p, you're going to discover that p is equal to 1. So if it was centered at the origin, it means the directrix, this will give you the value of the directrix, and you can easily find the value of the focal point. But because it's not centered at the origin, we need to calculate the directrix and the focal point. So having this as the x-axis and that as the y-axis. From what we have here, we can determine the center. So you equate x minus 3 is equal to 0, you're going to have x is equal to 3. So the x coordinate of the center will be 3. And if you equate this, y plus 1 is equal to 0, making y the subject, you have y is equal to negative 1. So the center is supposed to be 3, comma negative 1. So 3, comma negative 1 is a point somewhere there. So you're having those coordinates there. Okay. So this is the point where it will turn from. And it will turn upwards because you have a positive there. It's positive negative. It's negative, it was turning downwards. If it's positive, it's turning upwards. It's in the y axis because y is the subject. So we are having this one there. Then from here, we can determine our directrix. So our directrix here, we are having p is 1. So what they are telling you is from the turning point, let it go one step down there. There, that's where you get your directrix, which is y is equal to negative 2. And the focal point is from this point, go one step there. So when you go one step, you're going to have that as your focal point, and that point is given by 3, comma 0. So we've determined our directrix and our focal point just from that. So this has been translated instead of it being here, but you can see it has been translated to that point. That is about the parabola. Second one, it's an ellipse. So for the ellipse, you can see the standard equation according to this, because this is bigger than that. So this will be our A. So it's getting this form. So from that form, you have this, meaning you're able to determine the value of B and A. B is 3, A is 5. Once we've determined those, you have that as your x-axis and that as our y-axis. 
we have the new center because from this you can determine the center which is 2 comma negative 1 which is this one here once we have the center there we are supposed to know how far our ellipse will go like the major vertices so in the major vertices so that's the center you are having this point here so you are saying from where our center is there we know it's stretching in the y cause a is bigger than b so we are here to stretch in the y how far does it go to the y so from the center let it go five steps upwards so the center for y it's negative one so from negative one when it goes five steps five steps up it's, it's going to meet that point which is two comma four and then downwards let it go from here five steps downwards it will land at that point which is two comma negative six so you're telling you this ellipse is extending from that point to that point having this as our send then from our minor vertices which are these you're supposed to move now from here it's two two let it go b on the left and b on the b on the left and b on the right so from here going this side three times you are arriving at that point which is uh, five comma negative one and then going three steps on the left you are arriving at that point which is negative one comma negative one and this would be our ellipse so the only uh, biggest thing to know is the center once you know the center then it will be very easy to know how this thing is supposed to come out and you have the last one here, which is the hyperbola. Try this as an exercise.